Hey, how's it going? So in a previous video, I did a review on an $80 laptop that was surprisingly usable. By the way, it's on sale for only $60 now. Crazy, I know. Anyway, I received some comments from viewers who had some questions about installing Linux. So I thought it would be helpful to do another video and do a guide on installing Linux Mint on this laptop, the Evolve 3 Maestro. Welcome back to Phaser Tech. My name is John, and today we're doing a tutorial for a change. Now, if you've seen my previous videos, you might have noticed that I got rid of the green backdrop. So hopefully this background is a bit more interesting to look at. But anyway, so I did a review on this laptop, and it turns out it was surprisingly usable. It has 4 gigs of RAM, which is more than enough for a Linux distro. And in fact, I recommend it over Windows. But some people might not be completely confident with switching over yet, although they have been thinking about it. So I thought it would be useful to make this video, especially because unlike most laptops, the Wi-Fi drivers are not pre-installed, so you have to manually compile and install them. So that's what we're going to go over today. Let's get to it. So when I first got this laptop, I tried both Ubuntu and Arch-based distros but I had problems with the Wi-Fi drivers on Arch. Ubuntu 2204 and Linux Mint worked great though, so I suggest an Ubuntu-based distro. In this video, I'll be showing how to install Mint Cinnamon Edition, but the process should be similar for most distros. I recommend Cinnamon over Gnome because it's lighter weight and is an all-around great-looking desktop. However, some people might prefer the XFCE edition because it's more lightweight than Cinnamon. I feel XFCE is lacking in features, so another lightweight alternative that also packs a lot of features is KDE Plasma. Later in this video I'll show how to install KDE to replace Cinnamon, but this will be an optional step. Kubuntu is another Ubuntu based distro that comes preloaded with KDE. And I also recommend that one, but I'll stick with Mint for this video because I feel most new users to Linux who are switching from Windows would prefer the Cinnamon desktop, but it really doesn't matter too much. Also, I'll be going pretty fast through certain parts, so just keep in mind that you'll probably need to pause a few times throughout the video. And one last thing, I'll be using a USB to Ethernet adapter to download the Wi-Fi drivers, so I recommend you buy one. Okay, so let's get to it. First we search Google for Linux Mint and then hit download. Download the Cinnamon Edition. As you're waiting for it to download, you should get Etcher if you haven't already. This is what we'll use to write the image to a flash drive. Once Mint is done downloading, Open Etcher and select the downloaded image. Next, select the flash drive you want to write to. Remember, everything on the drive will be erased. Then hit flash and wait for it to finish. Next, insert the flash drive into the laptop. To ensure the flash drive boots first, we'll enter the BIOS by hitting the delete key on this screen. Go to the Save and Exit section, then look for your USB drive from the list and select it. Once you're loaded up, double click the Install Linux Mint button and begin the installation. Select your language and press Continue. Select Keyboard Layout and Continue. Check the box for Media Codecs and Continue. Now most of you will probably want to select Erase Disk and Install Linux Mint here. Advanced features aren't usually needed unless you really need full disk encryption, but most don't. Select the Something Else option if you want to specify which drive to install. This is useful if you did the SSD upgrade. Click Install Now and it will ask you again to confirm your choice. Before it begins installing, you'll be asked for your time zone and then your name and password. I'll go with a short password for this video. The default options are usually fine, so click continue. It will now begin installing and should take around 10 minutes to finish. Once complete, 
Hit restart now and you'll be prompted to remove the flash drive. Now let's go over how to install the Wi-Fi driver since it turns out the GitHub page has outdated instructions that don't work anymore. But first let's update the system. If asked if you want to switch to a local mirror, select yes. Enter the password and then change both the main and base mirrors to whichever location is fastest. But you'll need to wait for their speeds to be tested first. Hit apply and then install the update. It might take a while the first time. When finished, you'll need to reboot. Once you're back in, double check that there aren't any new updates available. Now we can install the Wi-Fi drivers. Search for RTL8723DU and it will be the first result at GitHub. On the top right, click the code button and download the zip. Extract the folder and then open it. Right click an empty area in the folder and then select open in terminal. We'll copy and paste the first two lines of the code under the requirements for Ubuntu. Once it's done, let's go to the installation section. Skip the first two lines and let's start with the third, but do make dash J4 instead to speed things up. It will take some time to compile. Once it's done, type sudo make install. Now let's load the module once it's done with sudo mod probe dash V 8723 DU. You may need to restart before the Wi-Fi will activate. Once you're back, click the network icon in the bottom right and you should see the nearby wireless networks. You should be good to go now. Keep in mind that each time the kernel gets updated, you'll need to redo this process. Fortunately, the vast majority of updates you do will not include kernel updates. And you can always choose to ignore the kernel update since you'll be asked each time. You should keep the driver folder saved so you can use it later. The directions are here and they're the same as before except you'll need to do make clean first before compiling them again. Now the cinnamon desktop is great, but if you want something more lightweight then I recommend KDE Plasma which is what I run personally. So let's go over how to install that now. First, do sudo apt update before you install any new package. Then type sudo apt install kde full and accept. This may take a while and the, in the middle of the installation you'll see this screen. Hit enter and then select sddm on this menu. The installation will continue and once it's finished, you'll restart. When greeted again, you should see this screen. If you see a keyboard overlay, try pushing enter to get out. Now we'll go to the top left menu and select plasma and log in. And there we are. It was as simple as that. You should now be running the KDE plasma as your desktop environment. So hopefully that guide was helpful for you. Now one last thing. While audio seems to be working fine for most people, there have been a few reports of audio not working in Linux. Which is why I wanted to ask you, is audio working for you or not? Please leave a comment below and hopefully we can get to the bottom of this. But anyway, thanks for watching and please remember to like and subscribe to help the channel grow. I've got plans to cover all sorts of products and my own projects as well. So please stay tuned and I'll see you next time.